All right, guys. Welcome, everybody, to another Friday Mastermind. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to get Todd Bookspan. Him and I, um, I'm actually in Vegas. He's on his way to Vegas. We're going to, with our families, we're going to see you two tonight at the uh, Sphere. So Todd is en route to Vegas right now. Uh, he was going to try to join us um, from the airport, but uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, you know, I am super bummed that I don't have both of those guys here, but I will try to play the the Deb X role and bring in some social media strategies. And then, you know, Todd Bookspan, Mr. Win by Noon, he's always like, how, how do we make this actionable? You know, how do we turn all the ideas we had today into like tactics, strategies, schedule to do's? So I'll try to do my best on that. Um, I've got two, what, what, the way I would position the two guests today is just industry innovators, uh, thought leaders, um, people that are, you know, one, a technologist who, who's been an operator, you know, um, Brian, is, this is the second time I've had you in the community, isn't it? Like I think been so, on yeah. Show before? Yes. Thanks for having me back. Yeah. Well, why don't you, why don't we start with just you kind of introducing yourself because it's only been one other time. I want to make sure everybody knows who you are. And then Justin, you were on the show recently, but I'll have you do the same after Brian. Perfect. Awesome. Thanks, Dave. Justin, great, glad to be here with you. Um, so I'm Brian View, President, Chief Operating Officer of Finlocker. Um, I'm going to come back to Finlocker in a moment because I do want to level set my uh, my experience as an operator, as Dave said. So I spent 30 years in the primary you know, mortgage origination space. Um, and for the my last, call it 15 years in that space, I managed large production platforms. Most recently, I ran the third party origination business at Flagstar Bank. Um, for the last four and a half years, I've been in the and the fintech side here at Finlocker. And what we're doing at Finlocker, uh, which I think is really relevant for this conversation, is we're arming loan originators uh, and enterprise uh, uh, lenders of all sizes with technology to in reach, assist, and engage early journey first time home buyers, as an example. That's one segment, and we'll spend some time on that. And so we're helping uh, originators compete with some of the, you know, big box banks that have personal financial management, you know, digital financial tools. And of course, you know, Rocket uh, Mortgage has Rocket Money, which they're using up the funnel in, in various ways for customer acquisition. Um, so we're all about arming originators with personal, with consumer facing personal digital financial tools that extend engagement for that originator. So I'm really pumped to kind of get into the discussion and talk about, you know, the tactics and the strategies for engaging up the funnel and building the database uh, today. Love, love that. And I, I hope people would write down that term early journey, first time home buyers, because I think it is such an important segment of the market going forward. We need to start um, really being thoughtful about, hey, where is this person? And, and so Brian, when we come back to you, at some point in the conversation, I'd love to hear you, like, what are all the stages of first time home buyers? that marketers should be putting intention around. I mean, you know, and and what and, and I'm going to ask you not now, but later to define what is an early journey first time home buyer in your perspective. Uh, uh and and one last thing before we bring Justin on, you know, Brian is is truly one of those people in the mortgage space that that's innovating. You know, I think um the industry going forward uh needs to make a lot of changes. Uh there you know there are great examples of loan officers that are, you know, the future of lending. Um but you know, I really actually don't know a single company where more than 50% of their loan officers are the future of lending. Uh, you know, the, you know, lenders need to up-level their sales force and sales forces need to, to become the, the lender of the future. And, you know, the topic today, become the cap, the wealth team, you know, is, is I think someone who has actually achieved that is, is the future of lending. So we'll define that a little bit more in a minute. Uh, so Justin, you know, I really enjoyed, I've, I've been on two Zooms with you, one where I interviewed you for our channel, one where you, you brought me on and, you know, interviewed me for your, your lender. Why don't you introduce yourself and give everybody a feel for, you know, what you're all about. Yeah, I'm happy to be on here. Appreciate you guys having me. Uh, I am, uh, Justin Allen with Ohio Valley Mortgage, uh, powered by the mortgage platform. Uh, I really serve the land of low, of low loan amounts here in Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana. So we're, 
we're technically just right across the river uh, from Cincinnati. So um, obviously happy to be on this call. I, I, to piggyback off what you said and then what Brian said, I think we really have uh, a, a big task ahead in terms of how we view ourselves in the industry and really how other views, how others view ourselves in the industry as well. What I mean by that is, you know, that there's so many of us that think, we kind of think back to what happened just a few years ago, where we were just, you know, a loan originator or an order taker, right? You know, we're in such a, in a, in a different environment now, and we have such a duty to be able to serve home buyers and our clients that we work with well beyond just the mortgage. So, you know, my, my big encouragement is something that we're, you know, constantly striving on or striving for and focusing on is really helping pave the way of having us see each other and others outside of the industry as a true strategist, as an advisor. Uh, I know you, you use the, the, the saying captain of the wealth team instead of just your, your loan originator or taker, right? I think there's you know so much more that our industry can provide in the way of helping pave the way uh, of to financial freedom for a lot of first time home buyers or even you know those move up buyers. Whoever we're working with, we have a duty and a responsibility to be able to you know serve their overall financial needs well beyond just the mortgage. So I'm looking forward to unpacking those strategies, unpacking those kind of conversations we can have, things we can think about, and um, obviously helping pave the way of, of changing the um, how the lens of how people see us and uh, each other and how we see each other in the industry as well. So I'm looking forward to being able to, to dive into those details. All right. Well, I'm looking forward to getting into that. I do want to remind everybody, this is Mastermind Style. Well, we've got a couple special guests uh, that are going to do, have most of the talk time. You know, if you're in the audience, you can put a question in chat. And we will get to that if you're watching this on YouTube or in our uh, Facebook group, Trust Engine Productivity Mastermind, feel free to engage. I will I will be monitoring those channels and we will get your questions in. Also want to remind everybody, you know, this, this is the last um, session I'm doing as part of what I call the 10X for all strategies. So if, I want to remind everybody, if you go to trustengine.com forward slash forward, forward slash 10x, there is a place where we are turning loan officers into the most elite mortgage advisors. Um, a, another term for an elite mortgage advisor is a captain of the wealth team. But I just want to remind you, there's there's just a tremendous amount of content here where you know all the sessions are recorded. There's a one-click link to sign up. This one we'll see watch now in a minute. There's a playlist. There's, you know, a playbook that's really made for sales managers for scripting. And then anybody that needs to learn to use mortgage coach better, there's lots of training content. And anyone that's not a mortgage coach, you can just click on this sign up button and, you know, sign up and get on the team. So this, you know, I, I might even keep this 10X thing going next month. Uh, but right now, this is officially the last day of this two month focus. So so let's go around the room real quick. And an audience, like if someone on on that's watching this has like your own definition of what is a captain of a wealth team, you know, you can either put a little sound bite in, you know, chat, or you, you know, if you want to cut and paste a definition or write one up real quick, I'll go last. But Brian, I'm gonna start with you and then I'm gonna come to you, Justin. You know, like what is in your mind the definition of the captain of the wealth team? And then we'll unpack how people can either get better at that role or how they can become a captain of the wealth team. So Brian, what are your thoughts? Yes, I've thought about this uh, ahead of the, this conversation and it's something that I talk about a lot on my channels and obviously with our clients and our prospects. And so I'm, I'm going to put the lens on a first time home buyer. And the reality is most probably 90 plus percent of first time home buyers don't have enough assets to have a traditional financial advisor, right? So the, they really don't have a wealth advisor in their life as a professional. They probably have a family member, maybe some close friend. And so I think the, the mortgage advisor who's working with that prospective first-time home buyer is uniquely qualified to play a role as the captain of the, of the wealth advisor for that specific segment. That's what that's where my mind goes is is uh, the mortgage advisor playing a role that just doesn't exist otherwise for first time home buyers because they frankly don't have the assets to to get on the radar of a traditional financial planner. And so 
for me, it's all about that largest asset that's going to go on that individual's personal financial ledger is going to be the home they acquire. And right along next, next to it is the largest liability likely that's going to go on their P&L. And so that's in our wheelhouse. That's in the mortgage advisor's wheelhouse. And that becomes the building block for that first time home buyer, not just for the transaction, you know, for the six months leading to the transaction, it's really for the next 30 plus years as that becomes the, the building block for growing personal wealth and family wealth using real estate. So that's, that's a loose, uh, you know, definition, but I try, I like to focus on that first time home buyer because I just don't think they have that resource readily available to them other than the, uh, the mortgage advisors. Cool. Cool. Dig that. Uh, Justin, how, how would you answer that question? I think, I mean, Brian said a lot of the same points I would really echo here is like, you know, when you think of that relationship and how we can play a part of that, I really think that we can be the tip of the spirit, so to speak, when it comes to helping develop or start their financial plans. I mean, like the, the reality, like Brian mentioned, is like when you think about, you know, most clients, uh, not all, but, but most that work with a financial advisor, um, you know, they are established in some way, shape, or form. They have money saved, they have assets working for them, um, and they have money that a, a, an actual financial advisor can work with. Um, a financial advisor may not be able to, to work with you if you don't have any money to work with. I don't mean to say that in a negative way. That's just the nature of, you know, of their relationship with consumers. So um, who are today's home buyers? You know, if you look at today's home buyers, a large part of who today's home buyers are made up of, you know, Gen X, millennials, Gen Z, um, and who are just really starting off on their financial journey, right? So, you know, we, we've seen some, you know, unfortunate alarming trends where, you know, the, you know, their their debt usage is going up and their savings rates are going down. That kind of speaks to what I mentioned earlier. So, um, how does this all relate to us? And, and the way we can think about it is, you know, a lot of people are starting off, as Brian mentioned, on their financial journey. And they're going through various you know, life events and through those events, you know, they gain the, you know, the overall desire or the need uh, to be able to buy a home, they, you know, whether their family's growing or they're getting married, job changes, relocation, whatever it may be that's driving that desire and need. Um, and they may not have no, they may not know how to really start that process. Uh, but the desire is there and we need to, and the need for that is there. We're, we need to be in a position to be able to help drive that, that, that goal of there. So uh, I think that's really where our, our, our advice, our strategy, and really our education matters more than really ever before. I think we, you know, get to help accomplish that goal, the, the biggest investment they're going to ever make at that point in their lives. Um, and that's really where, that plus one, you know, experience comes into play. We get to help create a path towards financial freedom for them. Uh, you know, we get to advise them on all these strategies beyond just the mortgage that can establish the, the groundwork and, and really framework uh, for creating a financial plan uh, to accumulating wealth, you know, to changing the way that, as you, know, you, they, as you say, Dave, all the time, that Americans get into and out of debt. So uh, I think that's really why we are the, tip of the spear and can be the tip of the spear if we really, you know, think our think of ourselves in the best way possible when it comes to these things. And again, like I mentioned earlier, thinking uh, beyond, you know, just the mortgage. And we we hear all the time, like, you know, so many people call for making it a requirement to take a financial planning class in high school or college, because that's really how important it is uh, to establish the right habits early. And these people, you know, that are going through these, you know, classes, so to speak, are tomorrow's home buyers. So, you know, having this mindset gives you the ability to be a well-rounded mortgage advisor and really truly a, a true financial advisor as well. It gives you the ability to establish great relationships with financial advisors, uh, let them see how you help your clients and, you know, how you can help their clients. And one thing I know financial advisors love is tools. And, and there's a lot of great tools that that Brian has, you have Dave, that I've, you know, we, I, I consider you guys both as partners that are a big part of our overall success. And, uh, you know, Mortgage Coach and FinLocker are, are two of the best out there. So um, being able to use strategies, but also being able to use the tool to help, you know, solidify those strategies mm -hmm. is, is key when it comes to, to driving those, those points home. Cool, cool. So great answers. 
I'm going to share a few um, data points to level set this for everyone around, you know, what I think a, you know, captain of the wealth team is, you know, and how you can become one. You know, first, I just want to kind of level set. These numbers might be a year behind. So, you know, if they're a little off, you know, forgive me. But last time I ran the numbers, there's like 19.4 trillion in home equity. And I'm quite certain it's it's higher because, you know, equity has continued to grow. Uh, last time I ran this, um, there was 16.5 trillion in mortgage debt. Um, I know that number is higher because we, you know, we hit to a, you know a trillion in consumer debt. Uh, you know, um, there's a total of 34.5 trillion in personal liabilities, including car loans, credit cards, student loans, and obviously student loans have uh, you know moved around on what that means to a, a first-time home buyer. You know, how how can they kind of optimize? their purchase power um, and manage their student loans. So that's, you know, call that the balance sheet of America. Um, anybody who's got updated numbers, put those down below. I know Todd Ballinger um, of Borrow Smart always does a really good job of that. But first thing I would say as a captain of the wealth team understands that and they're looking at, you know, what's my family's um, equity position? What are their debt, their mortgage debts? What are their consumer debts? Then what are their goals? Couple more data points could, you know, about a year old. But uh, when I did this, there were, um, by the way, these are Google stats. Uh, so I did Google searches and there were like 654,000 CPAs. There were like 311,000 financial advisors. There's over $1.2 million or two, 1.2 million life insurance agents. And all of those professionals are there to, you know, really help the most affluent people in America. You know, like, you know, most folks don't have a financial advisor. Most folks don't have a CPA. And 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 so, you know, Caps to the Wealth Team is the person that really brings, you know, the asset, the liability, the entire financial picture for a family into view. And then, you know, the other caveat I would say, is there someone that organizes the realtor, the financial planner, the CPA, you know, um, on behalf of consumers, you know, they're helping when they meet with the consumer, they're helping bring all of this together. So with that said, let's, let's get a little um, strategic. And I would love for each one of you, if there were like four, you know, three or four skill sets that a that a captain well team needs, Brian, why don't you go first sharing, you know, what are the three or four skill sets um, capabilities? And then why don't you go? And then I'll put my color around that. Perfect. Yeah, I think it's, uh, I would say it's a combination of skill sets and traits uh, that kind of play together. Um, and I'll start maybe with a couple traits. And, and this is what, to me, this is what defines or differentiates uh, the next generation loan officer, mortgage advisor from, you know, a transaction based loan officer, right? And, and then the first trait is patience. The, the willingness to play the long game with a consumer and not just not just get in and out for a deal. And so, uh, Dave, this kind of goes a little bit into when I talked about the the early journey first time home buyer. Um, for you know, for decades, our business has been it's started with a realtor, then the referral to the the mortgage advisor, and that was that was when engagement would start traditionally. Um, and when I talk about early journey, first time home buyer, I'm talking about a consumer who's 6, 12, 18, 36 months away from being ready to buy their home, their first home. And so it's it's becoming uh, involved in that that person's financial life earlier. So that's that's that patience trait, that willingness to play the long game that I think is such an important trait. Uh, uh, being being a, 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 a skillful educator um, kind of goes along with that, that long game approach. And so being willing to not just take questions and give answers, but provide insights and, and, and education that spans beyond the home and mortgage and takes into account kind of the, the broader financial life of a consumer. Um, being uh, having a being an effective communicator, 
and listener. I think those are, you know, kind of skills and traits that kind of blend across each other. Um, and then just being a, uh, being a sponge and a student, being willing to learn and then share what you're learning with your, you know, with your pipeline of, of prospective home buyers. I think that's when I, when I think of the next gen mortgage advisor, those are the things that come to mind. They're all, everyone understands loan products and, and how to structure deals. That's all, that's a given. Those are table stakes. It's these other, maybe a little bit softer skills and traits that I think really come into play in my mind. Yeah, love, love that, Brian. You know, hopefully everybody's taking notes. Uh, many of you on this call, you are you are already at that level where you are yeah. delivering at the same elite level. I'd right, ask you to, you know, during this hour, or if you're watching this video, take this as an opportunity to, you know, just kind of write down what do you think the Captain Wealth team is and then score yourself. I'm going to give you guys some thoughts on how I think you should look at it or at least one view to look at it. But I, I really want everyone to level this as an exercise, like participate. If you're watching the video, put it on pause, you know, um, take notes from what Brian just said. So love that, Brian. Uh, Justin, what about you? How would you, you know, what are the, what are the buckets? What are the skills? What are the capabilities of someone that, you know, is the captain of the well team? Yeah, thank you. Those are great. Um, I, we don't have really much to add, but the things that come to mind initially is, you know, this is an industry where you have to be a really good educator. You have to obviously be in a position to, you know, help educate not only your, your referral partners, but also um, educate your clients. You know, like I mentioned earlier, like it, it's so important to think just beyond the mortgage when you're you're working with someone, whether they're a first time home buyer or you know, move up because, you know, when, when clients come to me and, and we get this all the time, they strictly think about the mortgage and that's it. They don't care or blink an eye at, you know, the credit card debt they have or the student loans or car loan, whatever it is they have. Um, so we, we have to really be good at educating them as part of their overall financial plan, which the mortgage, yes, certainly is a big part of it, but, you know, education you know, has to go a long way in terms of, like Brian said, really caring, showing patience. That's all part of, you know, providing true education. I think, you know, we have to be really good at, you know, showing options. You know, there's so many, you know, different options that are out there in today's market. And that we're in, a, obviously, an extremely tough environment, uh, but there's still those opportunities that exist. We have to make sure that we do a really, really good job of being able to put options together and show options effectively that, really fit the need of the consumer. You know, I think, you know, the, the consumer doesn't know what they don't know. So we have to do a really good job of, this is another trait I would, you know, add to this is, you know, we have to do a really good job of asking the right questions and probing questions to learn more about their goals, their desires, their motivations as to what, as to why they're doing what they're trying to do. Uh, because like I said, we're in a tough market, but there are opportunities out there. And if we are really good at asking the right questions, you know, in an educative and and and, and careful and not a careful, caring way, uh, that's going to unlock those opportunities and put us in a position to be able to uh, be that captain of the wealth team and the quarterback, so to speak, on um, you know, kind of quarterback and quarterback in that entire process. So, asking the right questions, be an educator, be really good at showing options. And the, really the last thing I've kind of alluded to this is being able to be a great problem solver, you know, and that kind of goes into unlocking those opportunities, which comes from asking the right questions. So again, you know, my encouragement is, you know, we're in a down market, you know, tough market, whatever people want to say about it. Um, the one thing I promise you is there are tons of opportunities out there. We have to have the right tools, but also ask the right questions to unlock those opportunities to then be able to solve their problems. Thank you. So, me yeah, 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 no, I know. So, <laughs> so, so I, I absolutely love that. I think everything, you know, I've heard so far is, is dead on. I'm going to um, give a framework that I've, I've shared before. So, you know, a lot of you have seen this before. Some of you haven't seen this before, but it, it just really ties nicely into the conversation. Uh, Brendan Bracken, thank you for that comment. I don't know if you saw that in chat. Brian, but he he was just getting ready to do a demo of uh, your your platform. So I think, nice. Brian, in a minute, you, it will become obvious. But I I do think 
the types of things that you're doing um, with Finlocker are just a really good example. So in a minute, get ready to you know walk us through what it does and how it works. Sure. But here's here's a framework for everyone. Now, this is not necessarily the framework to be a captain of wealth team, but I would say if you want to be captain of the wealth team, like this is this is a step in that direction. And I, I would also say if you can't do everything in this framework, you're probably not a captain of the wealth team. You know, uh, you know, Justin called out, you know, showing people options, being strategic, you know, and I call that just be a mortgage coach, you know, be a an absolute ninja when it comes to um, looking at a consumer's full balance sheet and making recommendations. If you could do that, by the way, you're a real value to a CPA, a financial planner, a real estate agent in every family you serve. Of course, you need to turn your database into a data bank. And, mm -hmm. and I do want to push everybody to look, you know, most people think of database and they think of, oh, that's my past clients. You know, no, 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 no. Your database is, is, you know, it is those early journey first time home buyers. You know, it is, it is everybody you have touched and that you have contact information on. And and you're 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 literally turning that. And, and by the way, you cannot be captain of wealth team if you do not crush it, or you can't be an apex player because that's another thing that you know, someone that does this and does this at a level of excellence has a lot of has even more value to a you know CPA financial planner real estate agent um and then we'll probably spend a lot of time today on these two buckets uh and Justin when we come back to you if you could maybe share some real world examples of how you're being strategic uh you know in like 15 minutes or so and then you know this is another one you got to know the data and you got to educate with data I'm a big fan of keeping current matters they have a free blog, Keeping Current Matters blogs, but you need to know the numbers at a macro national level, and then you need to know them at a local level, and then you need to know them at a very personal, like the more you can like national, local, and now apply that to what that person wants to achieve, that's huge. And then this one over here, this is more just like being a badass salesperson. You know, you got to know your numbers and you got to win by noon. And 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 if you know your numbers and you kick ass and hit your numbers by noon and win by noon, you're 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 a data-driven mortgage advisor. Now, a couple pillars that um I would add to this to be captain of the wealth team is is you do need to have CPAs, financial planners, you you need to have intentional relationships with more than just real estate agents. Or you can be a and by the way, it's not for everyone. I'm not here to say everyone needs to do this. I'm just saying it's a real opportunity if you are a captain wealth team. But hey, you could you could be the most successful loan officer in America and just focus on this paradigm. Uh, just captain wealth team does require to have that title, you know, have that capability. You you need to be getting referrals from all these different partners. Or I just say, hey, you're you're kick -ass lender modern lender of the future but you're not necessarily captain of the wealth team brian anything you want to add to that or you know drill down on that before we get into specifically how you kind of help turn databases into databanks yeah i think I, I would just add that you know when you talk about the database the data bank um today this environment there's you know there's bigger pipelines and there are transactions being done so each one of us is is by default growing our database of prospective customers because the lack of inventory and affordability, all the things that are that we've all exhaustedly you know talked about. Uh, my belief and and I you know I look at I look at Rocket a lot of times in terms of where where's the puck going in terms of customer acquisition and. They clearly are playing the database game at a very, very macro level. I happen to believe that the game can be won at a hyper local level. Um, and 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 you all on this on this call and in this mastermind that have been participating in the in the 10x sessions can beat those guys at their own game at a at a local level because your your skill set, your your traits uh, are are going to be better than anything they're going to be able to do, you know, over the phone. Uh, you know, from from Detroit, Michigan. I'm, I happen to be in Michigan, so I could, I'm a stone's throw away from those guys. 
Um, but I, but I look at what they're doing from a you know from a technology perspective and a strategy perspective, and they've they are getting they are finding ways to get to consumers much earlier in the consumer's financial life. And so I think each of each of you all have the same ability to do that at a hyper local level and at a more personal level. And I think your your engagement can be more meaningful and beneficial to your communities, which again, playing the long game, that's going to result in, in business down the road. You may not see it today, but you will see it. I promise you that. Brian, to your point, you know, those people that you're speaking of are, are tomorrow's home buyers, right? Yeah. So, yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Point. So, so Brian, let's, you know, just because I want folks to one, know more about your platform, but two, know how it works within the context of becoming the Capital Wealth Team. So why don't you just spend a few minutes sharing that? And then when we come to you in a minute, Justin, why don't you be ready to share, you know, kind of a story and a strategy around how you were, uh, you know, you were a mortgage coach and you delivered advice to a consumer. And uh, and then we'll go from there. And Brendan Bracken, uh, I think, you know, hopefully you'll get a little, it'll kind of speak to your comment. Also remember everyone, if you have questions, you have comments, put those in chat, you know, whether it's live, in Facebook or in Zoom, or whether or not it's, uh, you know, you're watching the recording, feel free to put questions and comments. Love it. So I'm not going to do a demo. We could do that. You know, anybody that wants to uh, to learn more about FinLocker, I'm happy to, to jump on with you after. But um, first of all, technology alone is not the answer. Okay. I want to make sure that 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 everyone's clear on that. We have great tech. I'm super proud of our tech, passionate about the tools that we have. But if a loan officer doesn't embrace and doesn't do the things that we've already been talking about, doesn't possess the traits and the skill sets that we've talked about for the first half hour, and thinks that pointing their version of FinLocker at, at, at a consumer base is going to you know, miraculously turn into business tomorrow, that ain't going to happen. I just want to level set. <laughs> We're not miracle workers. I, I'm a believer that the right tech with the right mindset and a, the right skill set is a winning playbook. Okay. I think our tech is one of many pieces of tech that, that are part of that winning playbook. And so what we do specifically is um, if you think about the, the, the digital financial tools that consumers have access to on their own, mint.com, credit karma, credit sesame, nerd wallet, rocket money, um, obviously, when you, when you get into real estate, it's Zillow, Redfin, Realtor.com, et cetera. Those are all places that consumers go today, right? For, for various tools that they want to understand their, their spending and their budgets and, their, and their, their financial kind of position, if you will, they're going to Mint. If they want a better understanding of their credit and how to improve their credit and have tools for credit, they're going to the Karmas and the Sesames. And then of course, as they get uh, deeper into uh, the real estate space, and they're searching searching for real estate. They're going to those platforms, the Zillows, the Redfins, and and Realtor.com, or and Rocket Homes. By the way, that's another a brand that folks go to. Every time one of your prospects or anybody in your community is going to one or more of those apps, they're in a marketing engine for somebody else. And and not saying that you're going to lose any chance of doing business, but it just it just creates noise around the opportunities um, for you to kind of engage that consumer. So what we've engineered at FinLocker, we brought in all those tools that I was describing at a high level, financial uh, management. So spending analysis, budgeting, financial goal setting, um, linking, linking all those tools to the consumers directly to the consumer's financial profile. So their asset accounts, checking savings, investment, 401k, IRA, their liability accounts, personal loans, gas cards, charge cards, student loans, auto loans, real estate loans, if they have those. And essentially the, those, the linking of those uh, accounts fires off those financial tools. So now users have the ability to understand on top of their finances, um, you know, what is, you know, some savings tips and some budgeting tips and things of that sort. Credit, we allow the user to link their credit. And so now, your, if you're using a tool like FinLocker, you're giving your prospects uh, tools that they're going to get from other places, but now they're getting them from you. They're in your ecosystem. They're tied directly to you. And now as it relates to credit, they're 
They can understand their credit score. We update that every seven days. They can they get a, a, uh, a ton of credit insights based on their profile. So the uh, utilization rates and how it impacts their score, obviously their pay history, all that stuff. And then there's a couple of cool tools that allow a user to model changes to their score if they were to take certain actions on their credit profile. So what would my score do if I paid off, paid down these accounts, opened a new account, closed an account? What would my score do if I, if some of my accounts went 30 days or 60 days delinquent? What would my score do if going forward, all my accounts were paid on time? All those tools are available in the app. And what we're finding is they're they're highly engaging. And so every time a user's in there using that, those tools, they're again, they're in your ecosystem. And then what we do on top of that data that comes from those financial accounts and the credit profile, as well as the consumer provided data in their profile, is we we take all that consumer permission, consumer provided data, and analyze it, perpetually analyze it for mortgage readiness. And so we use stars and wrenches and we measure, you know, assets. Do you have enough assets to meet your closing cost down payment and reserve requirement? Uh, is your credit score, you know, at at least a minimum level? Um, what's, we can actually calculate housing DTI and total DTI. And so based on, you know, the, the, uh, the stars and wrenches, if someone has wrenches in their early part of the process, we then create an action plan in the app that's gonna direct them to those tools in the app that are gonna help address those areas that they're short on. And one of the one of these steady state action plans is contact, is contact your loan officer, contact your mortgage advisor. The mortgage advisor is always front and center in the action plan um, in, inside the app. Um, and again, I, I'm not, I don't wanna go into a deep dive demo, but there's one other cool feature that we just launched that starts to tie together kind of your, your ecosystem, your sphere of influence. Um, effectively, two weeks ago, we, we in, uh, added a feature that allows mortgage advisors now to partner with referral sources, with realtors, and co-brand the app experience with uh, multiple realtors. It's, you can have an infinite number of realtors in your you know, sphere that you can partner with. So now your realtor, your referral partners can be pointing this app at their early journey, not yet ready, prospective home buyers that are coming into their uh, database. So it just you know allows you to kind of expand and add value to your community, but also additional value to your referral sources. Hopefully, Dave, that's kind of a high level uh, overview. There's a lot more that's into it, but I, I, essentially, we're not trying to replace the advisor. We try to extend your ability to scale your. Uh, how you engage your communities. So let me kind of put this into a framework that I've um, led in this community for years. And some of this you guys have seen over time, some of it's fairly new, but I, I want to, I want to put it all in a framework because I, you know, the goal is how can you become the captain of the wealth team? So, so first of all, I want to want to just remind everybody of this key concept that we're teaching in the 10 X is that, speed to lead is no longer enough to um, thrive in the business going forward. You know, you, you, it, it's speed to need and speed to lead speed to need includes being the first one to talk to a consumer, but it's getting to that consumer's need sometimes even before they um, start calling loan officers and lenders, you know, it's being able to predict that. And, you know, a lot of what Brian discussed and what, an app like FinLocker would do is allow you to, you know, give that to a consumer where they're getting year around value. And now based off of their um, activity, you can get to their needs even faster. You know, you could be calling them before they're calling you. So it's really important. Like these are, you know, speed to need is the new most important thing when it comes to, you know, everything, conversion, success. Um, now, turning your database into a data bank I want to put it into how we look at things at Trust Engine. You know, we we think that if this is what your data but looks database looks like, it's not enough going forward. You can't execute on speed to need if you're not getting signals. Um, you know, when when Sales Boomerang was founded, um, I don't know six years ago. You know, 
you know, these basic alerts, you know, hey, listing alert, life alert, someone's running a credit report and they're cheating on you. Guys, these basic alerts are not enough either. Like it, it's it's better than this, but it's it's, you know, the most elite mortgage professionals, the most elite professionals are going beyond that, you know, and, and one of the things that's a core product to what we have is our borrower intelligence platform where we're literally predicting who's most likely to to buy now, whether that's, you know, move up, um, first time home buyer, um, you know, home renovations, reverse mortgages. And then of course, I'm going to have you in a minute, Justin, get into, you know, hey, how are you taking these signals? And then you're, you're bringing advice. But I want to make sure everybody kind of sees FinLocker and this FinLocker, I call it an experience that that a consumer has, is it's just part of the whole ecosystem. And and by the way, if you have this database that looks like this, and you have people into this engaged app experience, and when they do talk to you, you're showing them how to build net worth and achieve financial freedom faster. Like you, now it's just a question of taking this capability, these skills, this value you have, and and having meetings with CPAs, financial planners, realtors, and go, you know, look, if your consumer um, just goes to a regular loan officer, they're getting, and, and I don't want to just call them just app takers, but they're, <clears throat> they do mortgages. Here's your rate, here's your payment, here's your cash close, let's go. Whereas Captain of Wealth Team is helping that consumer make a mortgage decision that's helping them achieve financial freedom, and they're proactively managing that relationship over time. And that's just, it's a more valuable value proposition. Uh, Brian, before we bring it into Justin, do you feel that I portrayed you in the right way? Is there anything you want to edit to that, you know, before we no, bring I, Justin back in? I love it. I, uh, you and I have talked dozens of times about, you know, the signals and in, in, uh, surveillance capabilities of Trust Engine and the actionable, you know, so at a macro level, you've got kind of all these things that are happening, right? And then at a surgical, you know, micro level, at a very personal level, if you have a tool like FinLocker on top of that, you're now getting another layer of insights on that consumer that's that really is pointing to actions they're taking, intent, more, more intent-laden signals around where they are in their financial life and on that journey towards, you know, buying a home buying up, buying, you know, going down, whatever the, whatever their scenario is. So I, I love the, I love how the whole ecosystem kind of comes together. And again, it only works when you have, you know, somebody like Justin who embraces the, it, it possesses those traits and those skill sets to, to really bring it all to life. Yeah. So let's do this. We got about 15 minutes left. <laughs> Remember guys, if you have questions, put them in chat. And then Justin, you know, you use both our platforms, you know, you're, you're a mortgage coach and you use um, FinLocker. Why don't you kind of just tell some stories and strategies of how you're using both of our platforms in the marketplace. And, uh, and then, we'll, you know, we'll see how much time we have left. Remember guys, put your questions and comments wherever. Yeah, absolutely. So I know Brian's been a partner of, of our, our company for, for gosh, how long now, Brian, what, over a year now? Yep, over a year. Over a year. So uh, he and I had a great call just actually the other week about this because I I have not um I've not fully dove into just all the ins and outs about know we we use it and plan on using it more. Um and I think it's such a huge piece of driving that overall success of you know helping convert you know these individuals to put them in the best position to pop to buy when that time comes. And I think you know. What Brian said earlier is, is so important is, you know, context on, on the conversations that we're having is so key. You, know, you can show you can show these individual strategies, you can show options, you can, you, you know, show what it would look like to increase your credit score. But if you can't, you know, if you can't put the proper context around it um, as you're showing it to them, it makes it very, very challenging. I think you know, something that really stood out to me recently, a conversation I had I just looked, I'm going to try to recreate it, Dave, and I'll post it or send it to you guys afterwards as a mortgage coach TCA I made. Um, when I looked at it for this individual I made, it was, it, I turned it into a rate shopping um, TCA. So the, the context behind this is I had a, a buyer that came to me uh, that had lived in a condo. They had 
um, just had their their second child now outgrowing the condo. So they're now they're looking to buy, you know, they're looking at for that move up scenario. And if, most like everybody, I think you know, sixty percent of Americans have a rate with a four percent or below attached to it, or some somewhere close to that number. And you know, they had like a two point seven five percent rate, whatever that it was, somewhere in that window. And their big concern coming into that first conversation was with me was, hey, our payment on our new home can't exceed a certain amount per month. I know consumers in, in today's environment are so payment driven. Obviously, home prices and interest rates both impact that, you know, oftentimes in a negative way with the rate environment we're in right now. So what the buyer, this is actually the, I was the second lender the buyer talked to. So the buyer came to me and said, hey, I want to, want to put every single penny I have from the equity in my condo, which they had quite a bit, into the new home, which was double the price point of the condo they purchased a few years ago. Justin, what is where does that get me? What does that put me at from a payment perspective? And how does that fit into my overall plan? And the reason why they talked to me is because the other lender they talked to, uh, unfortunately, like I mentioned earlier, just strictly focused on their current mortgage and had a tunnel vision on their new mortgage. And that was it. This buyer had roughly uh, like eighteen to $20,000 in credit card debt. They had three uh, personal installment loans, uh, two car loans. And I think that was about it in a mortgage, obviously. And they they didn't think about any of those debts at all. They were strictly focusing on, hey, here's their mortgage right now. Here's what my new mortgage would look like. And they're building these budgets. And, and trust me, guys, when I say this, is like, you know, when buyers think about these things, for whatever reason, they think about the mortgages and all the other debt is completely separate out of that, right? So we have to really be able to, you know, effectively... Um, and concisely put everything together from a strategy standpoint and make sure that they know the mortgage is a big part of their overall debt picture. So they gave me this payment of where they wanted to be um, based on the budget that they knew they had to, you know, have in place with making their three installment loan payments, their credit card payments, uh, by the way, which are at 25 plus percent interest rates. Um, they had and that's what their budget was based off of. So they said, I throw every single penny I have from the equity in my home into the new home. You know, what does that get me? And unfortunately, it didn't really get them to where they wanted to be from an overall payment perspective. So what the other lender didn't do, unfortunately, and how we were able to reposition this is we we took some of that allocation of what they were going to have in place for the down payment from the equity in their home, and we reallocated that to paying off virtually all the other debt that they had. We paid off all three installment loans. We paid off all three credit cards, didn't pay off both auto loans, uh, didn't have enough room to do that. But we were, at the end of the day, able to not only pay off all their debt, their higher rate debt, I should say, we were able to increase their, I remember this number very clearly, increase their net positive monthly cash flow. Again, keep in mind, higher price point, higher rates, by $857. So they were able to buy a house that fit their, their needs. Um, we, they came to us with a problem. We were effective in you know, creating a solution beyond just the mortgage. And that's why I keep saying think beyond just the mortgage, because there are so many things that, that we can do creatively that can help solve our consumers' uh, problems and concerns that they have. Um, so that's just a big piece. And we were able to effectively show that with the mortgage coach uh, to be able to put them in a position to buy. Um, and I'll share that with you, Dave, when I get that recreated, because I, I just transitioned that when they got in the contract uh, to show them different rate options. So that's another beauty behind it, too, is like you you work with you work with buyers. You have so many strategies you can use effectively at different stages of that home buying process and their overall financial journey um, that you can really customize to help them in the best way possible, depending upon where they're at in the process. So um, that, that's my, my my big thing is like keep going back to think beyond just the mortgage. You know, think about what equity buyers have. They're in this case doing a move up and how that can effectively be positioned to, you know, pay down their other debt they have yeah no i i think that that skill and that ability is going to really pay dividends because not only are you going to be able to help people get clarity and confidence that a loan officer would not be able to do 
but that that brings a lot of value to um, mm -hmm. realtors. That brings a lot. You know, getting a listing is it's going to be hard when you're, you know they're going out there to get listings and people have two and three percent mortgages. Their their best chance for a realtor is to be working with a, a captain of the wealth team guy like you. And by the um, way, like I would love. I was going to say real quick, it's like, you, you know, they came to me and they, and they weren't going to, you know, make that move if they couldn't get that payment to where they wanted to be. You know, they, you know, that's why I was the second person they talked to because they were hoping for something different or a different outcome. Right. So, you know, that really was able to change their, you know, their lives and their family's lives in a positive way because uh, being able to wipe off or wipe away all that higher rate debt that they had. Um, and again, just think beyond the mortgage and, you know, at the end of the day, you know, Increase their month, monthly cash flow by eight hundred and fifty-seven dollars, and that and that changes you know, that can that can change an entire family like it did, right? Yeah. So so I am collecting um, TCAs, total cost analysis, where um, that's happened, where a consumer um, moved up, and it was because of the clarity conference. So if you could make a copy of that, anonymize yeah. it, so that we can make it, you know, a link within this video. So anyone that's watching the video, you know, we'll we'll just call it like your move up analysis. Call it Josh. I remember one day I can share it with you as a different strategy. I think buyers have a lot of concerns right now. I, I consider that what's called the cost of waiting. So if you want to to walk through that real briefly, I can do that. Yeah, well we got we we, go. we got nine minutes. We got nine minutes. If you want to just do three minutes on that, I'll I'll take it. Yeah. And then Let's leave, um, you know, five minutes or so for Brian's kind of closing thoughts and have him wrap a bow around this. Let's see, me one second here. You see my screen? Yeah, yeah, cost of waiting analysis. Perfect. And, so, and make sure you share this link with us so well, anyone who's watching this video can also follow along with this. Yep, yep. So again, context is, is key here, guys, because... Um, right now, buyers have, you know, you know really well, some concerns, but their two main concerns are home prices are high, interest rates are high. So, you know, we can, you know, that isn't, isn't necessarily bad news for home buyers, like a lot of the, the media and everyone else's spirit tries to portray, unfortunately. And, and, you know, that leads to, you know, misguided um, advice or guidance, which I know leads to, you know, emotional behavior and, and buyers not being able to take that next step. So, you know, right now, buyers, you know, have concern about rates being high, home prices being high. And that can be a really good reason or a good, you know, great news for home buyers. And Rene Rodriguez was actually talking a few weeks ago, and I, he says this so eloquently, and I'm not going to be able to come close to describing it how he did. But, you know, he talks about two things. There's a good time to buy versus a good time to finance. And they're two completely different pieces. We have to make sure that we do a good job of separating both of those out. You know, if we think about it as a good time to buy, sure. And if you look at a, a chart that is from Keeping Current Matters um, published last year, if you look at, you know, the pessimist, op or the pessimist view of what home prices are going to do uh, from a cumulative appreciation standpoint by 2026, you know, pessimists think that home prices may grow anywhere between 10 to 12%. Optimists who have a, a positive outlook on the market, you know, you know that range anywhere between 30 to 40 you know, to 40 percent somewhere in the middle you know if if things don't hit the fan and you know in the worst case scenario home prices may grow 10 or 12 percent right there's not many investments out there that you can buy in the worst case scenario where you know that grows by 10 to 12 percent so we have to be able to again provide that context that's that's so key and, and he talks about you know the cost of you're the is it a great time to finance and that brings into the fact of you know the interest rate conversation, you know, is it a great time to finance with with rates being so high? Well, if you look at where rates are and you just simply judge that and compare that to where you know rates were two years ago, yeah, sure, they're they're astronomically higher. But if you zoom out into a larger picture, you know, rates are still you know fairly fairly low. Um, but we need to make sure buyers understand is rates can change, and and that can when rates change, that can impact you know the the overall market itself, and that can impact. You know that that buyer's affordability. So these are things that I'm, I'm sharing with buyers all the time. So if I look at this cost of waiting tool tool here, I'll I'll work this here very quickly. Uh, I showed this to a buyer last week. Actually, has changed the name on it, um, or a few weeks ago, rather. But I looked at someone that 
is, is buying a home now. They had concerns about rates, home prices, et cetera. And this is a great strategy for this. But uh, buying a home now, again, I'm in the land of low loan amounts, so bear with me on the smaller numbers here. But uh, they were looking at a $400,000 listing. They were thinking about going in $10,000 lower uh, for a reduced price. And I showed them that option here. There's their monthly payment, $29.86 a month. There's their cash to close. Um, when I reposition instead of, again, where the advisor comes into play is saying, hey, if we're thinking that we can get some leverage with $10,000, let's do this instead. Let's keep the purchase price the same at $400,000, which matches the list price. Let's use that $10,000 worth of leverage, not to do a price reduction, but to do a seller credit where we could have a lot more positive impact. So this is this is definitely from probably a month or at least a month or two ago now because the rates are lower than where they are today, obviously. But the, the principle of it stays the same. So in that case, we would have basically used that $10,000 to lower their rate from 6.75% of the time down to, like at the time, again, 5.875%. Look what that did to their monthly payment. Changed their payment by over $133 a month. So that's a higher, higher price point, um, lower interest rate. Um, now, the big thing here is forecasting what if rates drop? All these buyers are going to flood the market again, um, and that's going to do what it did a few years ago, drive the prices of the home way up. So, you know, that $400,000 home, when rates drop a year or two from now, we don't know exactly when that's going to, to occur, can drive that price from, let's call it 400 to 430. Let's use a fairly aggressive rate. Let's say the rates are at 5% of the time. That's really only an $11 difference here between this scenario in this scenario. So when you think about the cost of waiting, it doesn't necessarily, you know, benefit that potential buyer when rates drop because it's going to, you know, increase the, the price of the homes with more multiple offers like we saw two years ago. So again, context is so key behind it. How we explain it is so key. And I really tie it all together with the really the best case scenario. Hey, buy, if you buy now, you're going to see that increased depreciation as home prices continue to stay supported just because of the supply and demand. Let's say if rates do get down to 5%, and hypothetically, we don't know what that's going to look like, that's going to give you the most savings. It's going to give you the most, um, you know, savings over 60 months. It's going to you know, have you pay the lowest interest in, in the 15 year time frame. These are all different things we can show buyers and come work through this very quickly. But buyers can then see very quickly that it may not make sense to wait just for the simple fact of waiting for rates to drop and what that actually means for their for their unique specific scenario. So super great example. Please share a link to that. And Anybody watch this, there'll be a, a link down below. So, um, you know, there were a number of people that asked about Finlocker. Uh, Dana put a link to get a demo. And I highly urge anyone that, you know, wants to be a data-driven mortgage advisor, wants to be a uh, captain of the wealth team that, you know, make sure you make an informed choice. It's an incredible platform. Uh, click on that link and get started. Brian, I want to, you know, one, give you closing thoughts. I also want to make sure that in your closing thoughts, you tell everybody about your newsletter because oh, yeah. uh, th this is a guy that y'all should be following on LinkedIn. Just following him on LinkedIn is just a constant source of value around, you know, just what it means to win in the future of lending. So follow this guy on LinkedIn, but closing thoughts and tell them how they can, you know, get your, your newsletter, which is an awesome resource as well. Yeah. Thanks, Dave. So Closing thoughts, you guys hit on, you said, you talked about clarity and confidence. And I, I talk about confidence a ton when I'm working with our clients and, and uh, prospects and confidence, you know, clarity and confidence to me um, means something different based on generation. What we, what we know is the younger generations want, there, there's a fear of judgment uh, to some degree. Uh, and so in a lot of cases, they want to be able to kind of play in a sandbox, get some clarity and have some confidence before they're in, engaging, you know, formally. And so one of the, the the ways I think our type of technology helps is you you put it out there for the, these early journey home buyers. They can play in it. They can model a bunch of different scenarios, get to a place where they're, they have some clarity on their own personal finances. They they gain some confidence that, you know, 
yeah, maybe I'm two out of four stars, but I'm not that far away from addressing, you know, my cash to close or, you know, I, I think I can get my credit score where it needs to be. So I love clarity and confidence. It, it totally aligns with the way we think about how our product helps consumers and how, again, it extends the uh, engagement of the mortgage advisor. Um, Dave uh, is a contributor to our FinTalk newsletter. Um, if you go to the finlocker.com, uh, up on the scroll bar at the top, far right is resources. And I'm pretty sure by the time I finish talking, Diane, I'll probably drop a link in there too. Um, if you go into resources, the bottom of resources is FinTalk. You can subscribe to our newsletter. FinTalk is um, a little bit of a passion project that I share with about, I think we're up to 20 industry experts, Dave uh, being one of those. And we've asked uh, this this group of folks to just share one one blurb, one one short article, one piece of content per month that we aggregate and publish every Tuesday morning. And our objective in FinTalk is that the reader, the recipient, who's the primary target is the next generation mortgage originator. Uh, the target audience could take something each time, you know, out of out of that newsletter, even if it's a cut and paste and use it to engage and, and educate um, your community. So this is a, uh, you know, a labor of love. It's a passion project. It's, it, frankly, it lines up with, with First Home IQ. There's just so many great people doing a lot of great things to help arm and educate mortgage advisors to be better resources in their local communities. And we're just trying to do our, our small part on that. So Dave, Dave, you, Dave I appreciate your contribution to it. It's really meaningful. Yeah, well, appreciate you doing it. You're, you know, definitely one of those guys that's making our industry better, helping lenders, helping loan officers, helping everyone that um, is part of housing. So, uh, you know, he did mention First Home IQ. Um, we, you know, this was a big week for First Home IQ. We um, launched the beta of our ambassador program. Uh, thank you. Shout out to Housing Wire for helping us get the word out around that. And thank you to Everyone who has signed up um, to either one, just follow the the mission at First Home IQ or or um, make a donation. You know, we've we've raised a lot of money already, and we've already got a lot of very um, just awesome people in the industry that are part of it. So um, thanks on that. So so guys, I'm gonna just real quick do my Todd Bookspan close on Win by Dune. You know, um, I mean, I, there's at least 20 ideas that came from today's call. Uh, you know, pick your top three, uh, you know, pick one, schedule a jam session, you know, um, hopefully one of those is to learn more about um, FinLocker, you know, make sure that you're subscribing to all the things we talked about. Justin, you're just an incredible example of um, future of lending. Thank you for being an advocate for both Brian and I, and just everything you're doing is is awesome. You know, you're really making a difference in your local community. So keep up the good work, man. Thank you. All right, guys, this is a wrap. Right. Have a great day. Take care, everybody. And if you're going to the YouTube concert tonight, shoot me a shoot me a PM or a text and we'll meet up. Take care. Have a beautiful day, Bye. Dave. <laughs> yes. Boom.